Hello friends, welcome to Village Idiots for Christ, where we're nuts for Jesus and just plain nuts. <laughs> oh, um, I want to make you laugh. You know, a friend of mine who will remain nameless, and he actually will remain nameless. I'm having fun with him. He says, you always look tired when you're making these videos. Okay. When you see me making these videos, if you've wondered, is that guy really tired or is that just the way he looks? No, I'm really tired. <laughs> I've driven all night and I may look tired, but I'm having a ball doing this. So if I look tired, it's nothing personal against you guys. I'm just tired. I'm a night driver. And at the end of the day, when I make these and I'm going into, I go to sleep after making these. So this is going into my nighttime, which is daytime for most of you guys. So if you see me tired, there's no issue. Um, uh, it all, it's all good in the hood. Um, I'm just, we're doing what we're doing here. I hope you're enjoying it. If you eat the podcast or the videos, they're both the same, one without video, one with video. Uh, but when you see me tired, just pray for me. Pray for me that I don't look so tired. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mark. Appreciate that criticism. <laughs> me and this guy, Mark, we just got it going on. We're just having a blast. Anyway, I... <laughs> Uh, are you enjoying your walk in Christ? I sure am. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to tell you how, why, why I know I'm blessed by God. This is for fun. See my teeth? See? See? I got, you know, I got, I'm missing some teeth and stuff like this. I'm a truck driver. We all are missing teeth in front of a truck. But look, I get, God let me keep the front teeth so I can smile. Isn't that nice? God's a good God. Amen. Let me keep my front teeth. Amen. Amen. So you pray. You pray for me. Josh, let Josh keep his front teeth. Amen. Because he, 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 he don't want to get one of them capsule crowns or any of that stuff. Anyway, chapter 39, having fun today. Uh, this is uh, chapter 39 in Isaiah. We're back to Isaiah. I know it's been a little while. I'm trying to, you know, when I do two or three parts of one chapter, I know it takes a while. That We're only 27 chapters away from finishing. I'm determined. I, I thought about today, maybe I should just let Isaiah go. No, this is good stuff. I don't want, this is a really good, it's a very, very short chapter 39. Let me jump in. It's uh, the envoys from Babylon who come to visit Hezekiah. And there's a really cool lesson in this. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and, and read this. At that time, uh, Merodach Bal Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babel uh, Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because he had heard of his illness and recovery. Remember, chapter 38, God supernaturally heals uh, Hezekiah. He supernaturally heals him with the poultice. And, and he gives him 15 more years. Pfft, good deal. And um, Hezekiah received the envoys gladly and showed them what was in his storehouse, the silver, the gold, the spices, the fine oil, his en entire armory, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. So Hezekiah opened all the storehouses, all the doors, he opened up everything. He showed them all the hidden stuff. He let these envoys, because he was proud. You know, hey, look what God's done for me. You know, amen. Woo. Good thing. Amen. Then Isaiah the prophet, you know Isaiah, we'll get his book, we're reading his book right here. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, what did those men say and where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied, they came to me from Babylon. The prophet asked, what did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said, there is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, we're going to get into some explanation of it. Just hang in there. It's, like I said, we're almost done. It's like uh, eight verses for the whole chapter. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord Almighty. The, the time will come when everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord, and some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, will be born to you, will be taken away, and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Now, here's the strange, strange thing, and, and it's total selfishness, and we're going to get into I'm not picking on Hezekiah, but watch one. Okay, so Isaiah has just said, let's, let's read again what Isaiah says to Hezekiah. This is mind-bending, because he's, he's warning Hezekiah what's coming. He said, then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord Almighty. The time will come, sh surely come, when everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, will be taken away and will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. This is not good news. This means that Babylon or, or um, Iraq is going gonna, is gonna to invade, uh, invade uh, Israel and, and literally take everything that belongs to, to belongs, at least in the king's palace, is going to take it all. And even some of his descendants are going to be taken away. So this is bad. This means bad days are coming. 
So this is, you know, this isn't something you party about. This is something you go, wow, this really, this is, Lord, don't let this happen. Now, this is why I love the Bible so much. Watch what Hezekiah says. This, this is a flesh. This is, Hezekiah goes totally in the flesh. I'm just giving you a heads up. This is, this, you're going to love this. Because I love, I love how real the Bible is. This will show you that these were real people in the Bible because God wrote the good, the bad, and the ugly about the people in the Bible. Watch what Hezekiah says to Isaiah's terrible prophecy about what's to come to at least the king's palace, losing all the stuff and some of his kids and descendants. This is what Hezekiah said. I wanted to build up to it. Don't, 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 don't. Build it up to it. Here it comes. This is what Hezekiah says. The word of the Lord you have spoken is good. Hezekiah replied, for he thought, <laughs> here it comes. Here he thought, there will be peace and security in my lifetime. <laughs> Let's read it again. And you might have missed it. So watch what Hezekiah says. The word of the Lord you have spoken is good. No, it wasn't. Hezekiah replied, for he thought there will be peace and security in my lifetime. We are, I mean, let's be real. We all have moments of selfishness and self-centeredness, but this is Hezekiah being totally selfish and self-centered. Wouldn't you think if Hezekiah, if Isaiah, okay, now I want you to think about this. God just healed Hezekiah and gave him 15 more years. So this is the God who healed his body, made the sun go. Remember the sun went back to 10 steps? So God made the sun go backwards. You know, he reversed the universe for, for Hezekiah and, and, uh, and gave him 15 more years. And so Isaiah comes and he brings this bad news to Hezekiah. The God who just gave you 15 more years made the sun go back and healed you. Wouldn't you think that Hezekiah would go, wait a minute. I hear what you're saying, Isaiah, but you know, God just healed me. He gave me, I watched the sun go backwards, this go walk up the steps, the shadow, and, and he gave me 15 more years. This, if that God can do all this, can't he deliver my, you know, can he deliver my descendants from this? Can I pray away this? Can I talk to God about this and see if he can, see if I can change God's mind and help him to, to not let this happen? I would think that that would be the, the response that he would have had because God just did all this good stuff for him. But no, all Hezekiah can think about is himself. And I'm not picking on Hezekiah. I love these things in the Bible. I love when the Bible shows people being people. That's what makes the Bible real to me. All the heroes in the Bible, you know, you got heroes in books. People write books about heroes. And they never show the garbage about people. They always show, they shine up the, the heroes and make them look perfect when nobody's perfect. And here's Hezekiah being a human being, going, the word of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied, for he thought there will be peace and security in my lifetime. Instead of praying to, I'm, I'm sure later on he prayed about it, but instead of saying to Isaiah in a way, whoa, can't, I, I just, I just got 15 more years of life. I just got healed. I just watched the sun go. Can I pray about this? Can, can I send you to the Lord to intercede, uh, to stop this from happening? I would have thought that's, in my mind, I'm going, Man, that would have been, that would have seemed like the natural thing to do. The Hezekiah got in the flesh like the rest of us. And I'm going to tell you a secret too in a second. This is a cool secret. And I don't know what chapter it is. It comes later on. I don't know if it's in this. It might be in Kings of Chronicles. But here's the secret. Hezekiah's 15 years weren't blessed. He got another 15 years. You know, sometimes God wants to let you go and take you home. You'd be better off to be taken home than take the 15 years. In either Kings or Chronicles, later on in, Hez later on in Hezekiah's life, in those additional 15 years, in part of it, he hardened his heart against God. He got in pride, and God had to punish him. It wasn't salvational, nothing like that. He still went to heaven. But Hezekiah, not all of Hezekiah's next 15 years were blessed years. So in some ways, you know, Hezekiah was all bummed out about dying, but maybe God was trying to spare him the trouble he saw coming, and, and he was going to spare Hezekiah, but instead he allowed it. He gave him the extra 15 years. But all those years weren't blessed that Hezekiah received back. In Kings of Chronicles, and I don't, you can look it up yourself. Now, I'm sure it's in there. I, again, I've read it. I've heard it. I know it's in there. But Hezekiah eventually hardened his heart against God and made some mistakes. And so sometimes when God says it's time to go, it's time to go. God knows that what's best. And Hezekiah was a servant of the Lord. He was a, this dude served the Lord like, like, like his, like his father David said, you know, his ancestor David did. So sometimes when it's time to go, it's time to go. But I, I, I love the humanity. This is what makes the Bible real is the humanity of it. 
Uh, the heroes in the Bible were men. This should give you hope for your own life. I'm, I'm not going to wind this up. We're only 10 minutes in. We're going to wind it up quick today. But we all are human beings. We all are subject to weakness and fear and selfishness and self-centeredness once in a while. But you know what? We can still accomplish great things for God by His Spirit. We can still be heroes to the people around us. We can still take care of our, our families, you know, work hard, you know, do whatever God would call us to do. You know, me making these videos, and I'm not boasting to make these videos. God's called you to do something too. And he wants you, these videos are these videos and podcasts in America are no more important than anything other people produce for Christ. We're all even in God's eyes. God's no respecter of persons. He doesn't look at this and go, wow, man, them videos are better than what Bob's doing over there. No, we each have our own calling. Man. But I'm flawed. I'm a flawed human being. I'm a mess like the rest of you. You see these videos, so what? I make a video. I make a video on a on a smartphone and on my old smartphone I record, record the podcast. Whoopie do. You know, <laughs> this doesn't make me any more important than anybody else. And I love doing it. I'm having fun, you know? But I I'm just another guy. I'm just a person like you guys. But man, don't let and don't let your flaws don't let your selfishness, don't let your self-centeredness, don't let your mistakes slow you down. If you make a mistake today, get up tomorrow, repent, and then keep moving forward with the Lord. Hezekiah did. He made a mistake here. He got into selfishness and self-centeredness, but he kept serving the Lord after this. Man, if you, if you mess up, fess up. What does God want? An honest heart before him. A, a, a heart that comes up to God. The day after you mess up, you go back to God and you say, I messed up yesterday. I did this, this, and this. I know you know it, but I'm confessing it to you. And I repent of it. I ask you to forgive me of it. Cleanse me of that. I'm an idiot. You know I'm an idiot. Now be real with God. And God goes, you're cleansed. Thank you for the humility. Thank you for humbling yourself. Thank you for repenting. Let's keep walking together. That's the kingdom we serve. We have a merciful high priest who's interceding for us all the time, Jesus Christ. He's in the order of Melchizedek. He's perfect. He's a perfect high priest who's making intercession for each of us in our flaws and our mistakes. Just like again, what you see like here with Hezekiah, this should give you this should give you hope. When it puts a mistake like this in the Bible, a guy screws up, gets says something really stupid like Hezekiah did here. What the word of the Lord that you said is good, baloney. It wasn't good. <laughs> there was nothing good about what Isaiah said to Hezekiah. There it was terrible. His own descendants were going to be taken and made eunuchs in the king's palace in Babylon, and stuff was taken away. That isn't good news. But again, Hezekiah was just like us. And don't you love in James, to tie in with this, don't you love in James, it says, Elijah was a man just like us. Yet when he prayed, the sky did not give its rain for three and a half years. And when he prayed again, it did. Elijah was just like us. Elijah was a man just like us. Enoch was just like us. They just, chose, they just chose, chose to walk with the Lord. And we can make the same choice every day, walk with the Lord. Amen, amen. Simple stuff. Simple chapter, but there's some good stuff in there. Some little hidden nuggets that I love. So I hope you hope you enjoy this. And by the way, I, I have been remiss in this. And a friend of mine reminded me, I need to, to remind you guys, hey, if you enjoy this, if you're enjoying these things, the podcast or the videos, forward it on to somebody. Pass it on. Share it with somebody else. Again, I'm not about, it's not about the, it's not about the subscription. I got 39 people subscribed to me. Woohoo! 39 people but it's about getting it out if you got friends that need to hear these things and see these things send it on to them it isn't about me it's about the word of god that we're in every day when we're in this this is about the word this is i'm just a vessel putting the word out there's a million of me out there a billion of me out there around the world just putting the word out for people so if you if you enjoy these if you have fun with these if you enjoy the my delivery the way we put it out there with us staying in the word send it to you share it with your friends let them know that, hey, man, this guy's nuts, but he's in the Bible at least. He's crazy, but he's crazy about the Bible. There you go. Share it with your friends, man. There you go. Amen. Love you, love you. Can't get enough of you. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're in Ephesians, I think. Yes, I think we're going to close out chapter 6, although it's the armor of God. It could take us 12 sessions of that. My gosh, the armor of God is so good. Anyway, love you, love you. We'll talk to you tomorrow.